Hey everybody, this is Eric Johnson with thinkwell.coffee bringing to you the last batch of the day. It's going to be a Honduran bean that we're trying to roast to 389. Now 389 is a roast temperature, is a very low roast temperature. It's um, maybe 10 degrees into first crack. Now first crack is at which point coffee becomes um, soluble. You've roasted it to a point at which you can actually brew it. But that's just where it begins to become soluble. So you're having to um, roast and develop the coffee further at that point. Now, um, there's been a movement in coffee for probably the last 10 to 15 years where um, roasting temperatures, finished roast temperatures have got down and down and we have light roasts and um, blonde roasts or whatever language people are using. Um, those coffees are very thin bodied. They are really bright. There's tart and sour um, flavors that are in the cup. And a lot of people drink these who are used to more traditional roasts and don't even recognize them as being coffee. Um, for people who are really into coffee and many coffee professionals, uh, these lower temperature coffees are some of the most exciting ones. The acidity is, is so bright and so vibrant. Um, acidity is very complex uh, in terms of what the flavor is and what it can bring. And so when you can have roasts like this one, uh, where you are really bringing out that complexity and vibrancy and um, you know, it's just something that you, I always look forward to drinking these ones. Now, the method that I'm trying to do here in this video is one that is, is bringing that aspect to the cup forward while filling out the sweetness just enough to have some depth to the cup so it's not too light. Um, it is and can be a hard profile to accomplish just because of how drastic some of the moves are. But it's one that once you figure it out and you have it in your toolbox, it becomes very effective. And uh, I hope you guys enjoy this one. This batch here that we're going to roast is going to be the lowest temperature batch that we're going to do today. So as we have roasted, we've gone from a 421 degree to a 416 degree, down to 390, well we did a 407 and then a 398 and now we're going to drop this one even lower at the high 380s. So 389 is what I am intending to do. Uh, it's a Honduras coffee and I love this coffee at a really low temperature It has such nice brightness, but it's, it's not overpowering. It has this um, it, It's like stone fruit um, peaches nectarines um, Kind of acidity with uh, If if you do it right, then it is also going to be the sweetness that kind of like sits underneath it and fills out the body some but I don't want to get rid of any of this really specific acidity that it has because I find it like really remarkable. So this is one of those batches that um, the coffee is light. It has a light body. It's really bright. We're not going up into the high 390s. We're not going to the 407, 410 range where you're like really filling out that body and beginning to like um, hide the acidity behind that. We're not going to the high temps where you're entering smokiness and, um, and having sweetness and smokiness, the edginess of smokiness balance with the sweetness we are way back down lower where this will be a light body a light color a lot of brightness super juicy but I want it to be sweet as well so how I'm going to achieve this is by I'm, I'm going to 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 think about how how do I get to that end 389 now that's about 10 degrees after first crack is happening 10 degrees increase so so First crack is gonna happen, let's just say 378, 379. Now, I'm gonna go 10 more degrees, but I'm gonna stretch that out. 
and I need it to stretch out because I, I want sweetness to happen. Now, if I, if I go from 378, 379, first crack is going, and I just kind of go right up to, you know, 389, I, I'm, I'm gonna not develop it well. It's not gonna end up tasting in any way that's pleasurable, and it's gonna be really one-dimensional, highly bitter, and those compounds will have not gone further enough further further into the roast and far enough that it's, we're having these the the development of flavor okay so what i'm gonna have to do is i'm gonna have to take that 10 degrees and i'm gonna have to really stretch that out so this is going to be one of those batches where i'm making very drastic moves um, intentionally now i am going to push this I'm going, to ha I'm going to push this batch right away pretty good and then I'm going to start pulling it back and pulling it back but I'm going to continue to have a push. Now what I want to do is I don't want, I want to have, I want to have my environmental temperature hit its peak at the same point in the roast that the bean temperature is hitting that first crack, okay, versus the environmental temperature hitting its peak way before first crack, like hitting it right when I'm hitting yellowing. That would be very different than hitting that environmental temperature when the beans are hitting first crack. So one is moving really fast and kind of slingshotting your beans forward. This one I'm wanting to push and, and get the beans and the environment moving together at the same time and, and have them hit the same spot where the beans are cracking, the environment is hit its peak, and then what I'm gonna do is just drop out the environment. I'm gonna pull back the flame, I'm gonna open up the air, and just this long, slow push, I'm then wanting the beans to, to just pause and sit in that and just slowly for 10 degrees increase over a minute and a half to two minutes. I don't wanna go over two minutes because I'm not trying to get into that space. I wanna be a minute and a half to two minutes increase open it up get the air going develop what's going on in there so this is going to be a long slow push and then dropping out afterwards that's that's what we're going to try to do so what i have here is 4.6 pounds of this honduras i have a lower charge temperature we're at 337 340 so we're just going to kind of think of that as like a 340 range this is the lowest charge temperature that I've done yet with these batches today. But what that's going to allow me to do is I'm going to be able to apply a ton of heat and get these things moving. And then we're going to sync up. You know, I talk about the environment. It gets this, the environment and beans and air and flame get this like unity and this union that kind of happens. And they're sitting together and moving through space and time and increasing and I want that to link up right away. I want a long ways to be able to do that and pull it out and my movements are gonna be slow and gentle and gradual and then woof, totally drop it out. So here we go. 340 is our charge temperature under Skinner started. Now, charging the drum and I'm increasing my flame up to 10 inches. And now I'm just gonna sit here and I'm gonna watch, I'm gonna wait for the turnaround to happen, the bean temperature, the, the probe, the thermocouple is dropping, the beans are taking on heat. There's some point at which those are gonna turn, it's gonna begin increasing. The same thing with the environmental temperature is gonna happen. It's decreasing, it's being shocked with these cold room temperature beans into this, this 340 degree environment. They're gonna equalize out and then they're gonna begin turning up. Now, depending on how low this environmental temperature gets, I then have to, I have to consider what am I going to do with my, with my flame. The lot, the, the, you know, this roast and this method, a lot of the control and the, the maneuvering is going to come through this flame setting and um, gentle, intentional movements. So now, if you look here, we're at, we're at you know a minute and 10 seconds in and our environmental temperature has already turned around and we're at 327. So this has begun to increase its temperature. I have a high flame setting. 
and a and a 4.6 pound batch, which means that I get to control this temperature very easily with my. Now, if I had six pounds in here, this would still be falling. This wouldn't be turned around already, but it's turned around. And we're gonna watch our bean probe. Bean temp is just about to turn around. Like right now, it's gonna start going back up to 220.8. And then there you go. And and so now we've got our the air inside where the beans are existing has has turned around, is beginning to increase. The beans are definitely not 220 degrees right now, but that air in that space has turned around. And now it within the beans and within the environment, we're now in this long push. I have 100 degrees to go here within the environment to be able to like push these beans to get them to that first crack. And what I wanna think about here is the rate of rise. So I don't want to just push these things super quick and find myself having to make like big adjustments later on with the flame. I wanna, I wanna like get them moving pull, I will make an adjustment to the flame earlier than I have in other roasts because I want it to just steadily move there. So I'm going to make my first adjustment here and the, your first adjustment that you ever make. So on the flame, we're watching the gauge up top. I'm going to just go down. I'm just taking it, just the edge off of this flame. I'm going to sit at 9.3. Now what happens is you've got this environment and there's this, there's this thing happening within the drum and there's this force and this pull and once you the very first flame movement that you make you're breaking that that environment that's in there and um, we're going to continue to break this environment bit by bit not not huge but slowly breaking it until it is is at the exact spot that we want it to be and we're going to make those adjustments while we sit and watch what the beans are doing and the temperature of the beans is doing and the time and where we're at in the row. So it's, this is one of those where you've really got to really watch the beans and watch your gauges and understand the way to make these movements. Um, I'm going to pull back again on the flame and I'm going to go down to, I'm going to stay in the eight inches, but go down right around here here 8.2 so for me when i'm pulling back on the on the flame you know you can actually feel is is there's a pull on the flame itself that you can feel how hard is how hard is it to break that environment how easy is it um when i'm when i'm pulling that down are these beans like can i tell that it's like re i'm really losing that that movement that i don't want to lose or do i have more room to pull and essentially my my aim in, in the way that I'm like using the flame setting in this is I'm pulling it back as much as I can without compromising the forward movement. So I'm not trying to keep it as hot as I can. I'm trying to keep it actually like as low of a flame as I can to get where I'm trying to get. Now I'm 100 degrees away on my bean, my beans from their first crack and I'm like 50 degrees away. So. I still have plenty of room to increase my environment without um, maxing it out while I have a lot of space to move with my beans. So chaff is beginning to collect. I'm gonna open up my airflow. It's, we're five minutes in. We're just about to enter the second phase. I'm gonna open up the air a little bit more than I have in the other batches. Like this one, I'm opening up the air right now, kind of beginning to get that environment to change. I want to make moderate, small to moderate movements to like while this whole thing is going shifting so I can get this really consistent push. So when I get to that moment that I want to drop the floor out on the environment, I can and it's available to me and I'm not screwing up all of you know what's happening with these beans. So it is five minutes and 50 seconds. We're at 300 degrees and there's chaff and the beans are beginning to I'm gonna take a peek. So six minutes and we got they're just entering you know it's kinda of hard to like when do you say what's the second that you count a bean as being into yellowing? It's hard to say. I mean I in some ways I think it's safest to say 
when is it not a green bean anymore? Like when is there no character left to it as being a green bean is when the yellowing has begun. That would maybe be a little bit later in, in, as determination than other people would say. The only benefit to looking at it that way when is there no green bean left, no, no type of that like color or quality. The benefit to looking at it is that is it's, it's absolute, you know, like you, it's as objective to this entrance into this phase as you can get. So I'm pulling back my flame setting again, and I'm gonna pull this thing back. We're gonna go down now, nice and steady, nice and easy. Now I'm not trying to stall this thing out yet. I still want there to be an increase in the environmental temperature but I'm going to just slowly bring this thing down to, let, I think it's gonna end up, I'm listening to the beans and the drum. I'm feeling the pull of the air on the flame and I'm gonna end this thing right around four inches, I think. Four inches of flame. Maybe I can go a little bit lower still too, which would be nice. Okay. So we're gonna keep going down because it's letting me. And I'm gonna go down further. We're gonna end, I think I'm gonna, 2.8 feels like, okay. So we're sitting right here. We're just gonna let this be. Now I've got, I've got 20, where's 25 degrees, 30 degrees on the beans and I've got a handful of degrees on the environment to increase. But what I am doing, as you can see, is the environmental temperature is continuing to increase bit by bit, slowly and steadily. It hasn't moved yet. <laughs> it is, okay, there you go. So it's really a slow increase, which is exactly what I want, okay? And now we've got, this is still cooking along. We're going up by threes, two, three, 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 which is great. Now, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna open up the airflow just a little bit right now because this is gonna increase, just, I'm just touching this. I wanna make these small maneuvers and get myself into the position. And I can hear the, I can hear the air moving differently in the drum now. That's why I'm gonna put it on pause because I don't want, my environmental temperature to begin dropping out now. I still want this to increase. So I'm gonna to touch it up just a bit. I'm gonna go up, you know, four tenths of an inch. I increased it and we've already seen this increase here, which is great. Now this is, when you're watching your environmental temperature react so quickly to your flame adjustment, which is what just happened. It means that we have this, this unity that's happening between the environment, between your flames, between the beans, like there's just this, we are we are really, everything is together and working exactly how I want it to. So I'm gonna open up the flames a little bit more. We're getting close, uh, we're not opening up the flames, we're opening up the airflow, but we are getting close, we're approaching first crack here and we are getting super close. And it's gonna be a 10 minute, you know, 10 minutes is when we're gonna hit our first crack. And we're gonna go, that means that we're gonna try to end this batch between 11 minutes and 30 seconds and 12 minutes, sort of depends. Okay, so I heard the first snaps, second one, third one, fourth one, fifth one, okay. And so it's 378. Now, we're in first crack now. It's 1018, we're calling it. So I got till 1218. I'm gonna have this thing out of here by 1218, but I could have it out as soon as 1148. And I can hear the cracking. I like what I'm hearing. I am going to begin to draw. Okay, flame, I have all but cut out. I mean, I'm almost at zero. I'm leaving some flame in there. I'm going to begin to open up the airflow and I'm going to open up all the way and I'm killing the flame. And now this thing, I've just totally pulled the floor out from under it. And I've got, I'm just letting, I'm just taking in these numbers in this time. So 1148, and this is increasing still. This is dropping. If I can get one minute in, and I'm gonna look at these beans, I can be, okay, so we're one minute in, we're at 388. 
a minute and a half is in. And now we've really significantly dropped here and we're still staying with the 389, which is what I want. And if I can get 10 more seconds on this for developments, Now I'm smelling the beans to really, that's it right there. Okay, so we got 1148, 390, and we got all the way down to 409, which is really low on the environmental temperature. We're really um, stalling that part of the face. Now, I am like, you know, I really wanted a 389. I got 390. I, I can definitely be happy with that. It's just a few tenths of a, uh, second off. Now, here's a, a really big thing to know and to take note of is that we walk into a roast with a plan and with intentionality and we adjust and think about how are we going to get to that end point that we want to get to by what we do at the very beginning and considering the variables and the factors that we know are going to be a part of it, like charge temperature, the mass, how, you know, how many beans are we putting in here? What is our flame going to be initially? So we have these things that we make a plan and we have our best intention. And in real time, you then have to make these decisions. Like, do is what's important in this thing to be that it's at 389, that that number is important, or is the time of development important? Now, based upon this batch and how things were going and, and how I what I knew I did with the environment where I knew that I wanted to get more development then I cared about what the temperature was specifically at. So I let it go the 10 extra seconds and we went up into the 390 instead of staying at 389. But what that gave us was these, this, those 10 seconds, you can taste the difference in a cup of 10 seconds of roasting. Um, and I care more about that because that is the very first and the foremost thing that we're putting forward here, like when we roast, the, the, the first thing is this batch and these beans and the roast. And the things that are secondary are, um, are what was the specific you know, temperature. These temperatures on our coffees that we have, like this will be written on my bag as a 390 Honduras. That is communicating something very specific to our customers. And a 389 and a 390, the customers who understand what we're doing with coffee are going to know that those are right in that, you know, that same space. They're filling, they're in that same place in the field that we're like heading to and standing at. Um, and what I needed to do in that moment is make these decisions around, am I adding more development time or am I cutting it early? And what is the priority and always, the environment, the beans, and the roast is the priority, way more than what the numbers are or what are the things that we're gonna kind of superficially say we have to have. Um, so this is a great, this is a great batch. Um, I'm really excited to drink this. I, I think objectively I got what I was hoping out of it. Um, and I think that this is gonna be uh, a batch that has lighter body, um, fully developed, but just the acidity is going to be sitting bright and sitting on top of, of this. And uh, it's going to be a really bright, complex, crisp cup of coffee. So thanks for watching. Thanks for, um, thanks for being a part of these batches and checking us out. I really appreciate it. And uh, take care, everybody.